Thomas and the Birthday Mail. It was the stormy season on the island of Sodor. All the engines were battling against the bad weather. Thomas was busy delivering supplies and mail in a far part of the island. He really enjoyed going up to High Farm. It was up on a hill. Right at the end of the line, a little girl called Alice lived there. Alice and Thomas were good friends. One day, Thomas was on his way to High Farm when Rosie stopped beside him. Rosie was a cheerful, chirpy little tank engine. She was always pleased to meet Thomas. She liked him so much that she wanted to be just like him. So she tried to copy him. She tried to wish the way he did. She even tried to whistle like Thomas. It made Thomas cross. Hello, Thomas, puffed Rosie brightly. What are you doing? It's Alice's birthday, chuffed Thomas. I want to get all her presents up to High Farm in good time. Just then, Harold the helicopter arrived. Another storm warning, I'm afraid, he shouted. High winds on the way and heavy rain. Harold warned Thomas not to go up to High Farm. Heavy rain can cause landslides on that hilly route, he said. And Harold flew away. Thomas didn't want to let Alice down. High winds don't bother me, he puffed. Or me, chuffed Rosie. I'll come as your back engine. But Thomas didn't want Rosie to come. No thank you, Rosie, he huffed firmly. I'll manage on my own and he chuffed quickly away. But Rosie liked Thomas very much, and she wanted to help, so she chuffed cheekily after him. Thomas puffed along the line to High Farm. The sky grew darker and darker. Soon it was pouring with rain. Thomas's pistons pumped and his boiler bubbled. It was hard work. Rosie can't follow me now, he thought. She isn't strong enough. Thomas was wrong. Rosie's pistons were pumping and a boiler was bubbling right behind him. She whistled cheerfully to Thomas. Thomas was very annoyed. Soon Thomas came to a junction. One way was the longer, easy way to High Farm. The other way was shorter and much harder. Thomas knew that the longer way was safer. But I'll take the shorter way, he wished. Then Rosie won't follow me. She's not strong enough. As the storm raged, Thomas puffed furiously up the steep track. Thomas was almost at High Farm. He was sure Rosie wasn't behind him now. I won't be seeing any more of her today, tooted Thomas happily. Then there was trouble. Earth and stones tumbled down the bank and blocked Thomas's track. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas but he still wanted to deliver Alice's presents. I'll just have to bash my way through, thought Thomas. And he pushed forward into the landslide. Thomas was up to his buffers in mud and stones. He tried to push on, but he couldn't. He tried to back out, but he couldn't. Thomas was stuck. Thomas felt silly. 
and very sad. I should have listened to Harold, he wished unhappily. Now Alice won't get her presents on time. I've let her down, he thought sadly. Then he heard the toot of another engine. It was Rosie, puffing proudly up the hill behind him. It's me, tooted Rosie cheerfully. Then she saw Thomas was stuck. Thomas felt very silly. I'll go and get help, chuffed Rosie. Wait a minute, whistled Thomas. Please, will you deliver Alice's presents for me? Rosie was very happy. Of course I will, she puffed. Rosie was soon coupled up to Thomas's trucks. Then she steamed off to High Farm. Thomas waited for Rosie to come back. He was happy she had followed him after all. Soon Rosie came puffing back down the line. Alice's mother has telephoned for help, Rosie told Thomas. Edward is on his way to pull you out. Then Thomas noticed that Rosie had a passenger on board. It was Alice. She had come to thank Thomas for getting her birthday presents to her. I couldn't have done it without Rosie's help, Thomas puffed. Now we can all celebrate your birthday together. Thomas tooted happily. And so did Rosie. Duncan drops a clangor. It was a busy time on the narrow gauge railway. It was the day of the country fair. The little engines puff through the forests and valleys, getting ready for the big day. Rusty was taking trucks full of flowers. Peter Sam was taking pumpkins. And Duncan had a very special job to do. He had to collect the big bell from the clock tower to be polished. On the way, Duncan puffed along an old and bumpy track. It was his favourite part of the railway. Each day, Duncan would rattle along the tracks. He enjoyed the sound his wheels made. Duncan raced backwards and forwards, rattling and clattering over the bumps. Reneus chuffed up. Duncan, you're going to be late, he peeped. But Duncan didn't hear Reneus. His wheels were clattering and rattling too loudly. When Duncan finally arrived at the transfer yards, he was very late and the foreman was cross. Workmen were waiting with a large wooden frame. Inside was the big bell. The bell chimed cheerfully as it was loaded onto Duncan's flatbed. What a wonderful sound, peeped Duncan. Remember? said the foreman sternly. The bell is very heavy. The track to the polishers is old and in need of some repair. You must go slowly and carefully. But Duncan wasn't listening to the foreman. He was enjoying the chiming of the bell. Duncan chuffed along the track to the polishers. As he puffed through the mountains, his wheels started to clatter and the bell started to chime. Duncan went faster. The bell chimed louder. With every bump and bend, it rattled and rang, it tinkled and clanged. 
Tom can like the sound of this even more than the sound of his wheels. He was having a wonderful time. Whee! He wished, and the bell rang louder and louder. Slow down, called Rusty. But Duncan didn't hear. Hooray! Duncan hooted. Take care, chuffed Scarlowy. Whoosh! whooped Duncan. The bell will come loose, puffed Mighty Mac. But still Duncan didn't listen. He rattled on. The track was getting bumpier and the bell chimed louder. Sir Handel was taking on water. He saw Duncan racing towards him. Hooray! whistled Duncan. Slow down, hooted Sir Handel. The track ahead is very wobbly. Listen to my bell, Sir Handel, whooshed Duncan. Isn't it wonderful? Then there was trouble. Duncan's wheels rattled over the wobbly track. He applied his brakes, but it was too late. The flatbed bumped into the air. The bell tumbled off the flatbed and rolled down the hill. Clang, clang, boing went the bell as it fell and fell. Oh no, cried Duncan. I've lost the bell. Now it won't be polished for the country fair, he puffed sadly. It's all my fault. Everywhere was still and quiet. Then Duncan heard a noise. That sounds like a bell, he wished quietly, and he listened very hard. It is a bell, he tooted. It's my bell. Maybe if I listen and follow the sound, Duncan puffed, I will find the bell. Duncan followed the sound. It's getting louder, he puffed excitedly. At last, Duncan could see the bell. It was caught in a tree. The wind blew gently and the bell chimed sweetly. Duncan raced down the hill and he arrived just in time. The branch snapped and the bell fell onto his flatbed. Hooray! chuffed Duncan. He was very happy. Duncan puffed to the polishers. This time, he puffed slowly and carefully, just as he had been told. Soon, the bell was polished and Duncan chuffed slowly and carefully all the way back to the transfer yard. Duncan delivered the shiny bell just in time. And when the clock chimed for the opening of the country fair, Duncan thought it was the best sound he had ever heard. Toby's afternoon off. The engines of Sodor are very friendly. And Nom is more friendly than Toby. Toby is a happy, smiling steam tram with lots of friends. There's Mavis at the quarry, Salty at the docks, and Thomas. They're all Toby's friends. One day, Toby had finished all his jobs early. He was going to spend the afternoon at the farm. Toby loved visiting the animals. As he was about to leave, the Fat Controller arrived. Toby, he said, I have three important specials. As you have finished early, 
You will have time to do all of them. Yes, sir, puffed Toby. But Toby was worried. He liked being useful, but three jobs would take him the rest of the day. Now he would have no time to go to the farm. Toby puffed off. He felt sad. But then he had an idea. Perhaps he could get everything done in time. All I need is some help with just one of my jobs. I'll ask one of my friends. Toby's first job was to shun some trucks at the yards. As he arrived, he saw Mavis. Mavis will help me, he thought. Sorry, Toby, no time to talk, Mavis puffed, and she steamed past him. Toby was upset. He had been sure Mavis would help him. I'll just have to shunt the trucks on my own, he puffed sadly. Next, Toby had to collect some empty trucks from the depot. As he arrived, Thomas was leaving. Thomas, called Toby, wait! Will you help me take some trucks? asked Toby. Sorry, Toby, chuffed Thomas. I'm in a hurry. I'll help you later. And Thomas raced away. Toby was surprised. Mavis and Thomas had both rushed off very quickly. Now he would have to take the trucks to the coaling plant himself. It was getting late. Toby was worried he wouldn't get to the farm and he wouldn't get to see the animals. Once Toby had delivered the trucks, he rushed to his last job at Brendam Docks. Perhaps my friend Salty will help me. But as Toby arrived, Salty was rushing towards him. Salty, cried Toby, stop, please. I have to help Cranky unload lots of cargo, puffed Toby. But I'm running out of time. Will you help me? Ah, sorry, Toby, said Salty. But I have an important delivery. This piston rod is too important to wait, matey. Toby felt miserable. He knew deliveries were important, but he thought helping a friend was important too. Neither Mavis, Thomas, nor Salty had helped Toby. And I thought they were my friends puffed Toby sadly. He would have to move all that cargo on his own. Now he'd never get to the farm. Toby pulled up alongside Cranky. Why are you waiting for? Crank Cranky. I'm here to pick up the cargo, said Toby sadly. The ship's been caught in rough seas, Cranky snapped. The cargo won't be here till morning. Toby was delighted. Now he'd have time to get to the farm, so he raced off. Then Toby saw Henry in a siding. Where are you going in such a hurry? wheezed Henry sadly. Toby told him all about wanting to go to the farm, and all about Mavis, Thomas and Salty. I thought friends helped each other, Toby wished, but they were all too busy to help me. That's because they've all been helping me, puffed Henry. Toby was surprised. I broke down, said Henry. So Mavis brought my special coal. Thomas took my passengers and Salty brought me a new piston rod. Toby knew he had made a mistake. Mavis, Thomas and Salty had been helping a friend after all. They were all helping you, gasped Toby. Toby felt very silly. Is there anything I can do to help you, Henry? He asked. Henry was surprised. But then you won't get to the farm to see the animals, said Henry. It doesn't matter, said Toby. Helping a friend is much more important. What can I do? Henry asked Toby to take his carriages to Knapford Station. 
Henry's carriages were very, very heavy. I don't know if I will be able to move them, said Toby, but I'm going to try. Toby coupled up to the carriages. He heaved and hauled and puffed and pulled. At last, Henry's carriages began to move. Henry was very pleased. Thank you, Toby, he called as Toby puffed away. Sorry about your afternoon off. But Toby didn't mind. He was helping his friend, and that was better than an afternoon off any day. It's good to be Gordon. Gordon is a beautiful blue engine with a great big boiler and a separate tender for his coal. Gordon's favourite job is to pull the express. One beautiful spring morning, the fat controller came to see Gordon. Today, if you pull the express across the island and back again, on time, then you will set a new Sodor record. Gordon was excited. He wanted to set a new record more than anything. Hooray for Gordon, whistled Thomas, and all the engines tooted. Gordon steamed over to the coal depot. He rolled under a coal chute and his tender was quickly filled. Gordon started puffing away when the yard manager called. Stop, Gordon! You've been given Henry special coal by mistake. Gordon knew that Henry needed special coal, but he thought Henry's coal would help him go faster. So he pretended not to hear. Henry had to take tar wagons to Knapford. He rolled his tender under the chute and waited for his coal. I'm sorry, Henry, said the yard manager. There is no special coal left. You will have to use ordinary coal today. Henry was worried. Ordinary coal clogged his firebox and stopped him making steam but he knew he had work to do. It's only for one day, he said bravely. I will try my very best. Gordon arrived at Knapford Station. His passengers boarded and he happily set off right on time. Soon Gordon was chuffing as fast as he could. He didn't know if it was Henry's coal or the crisp bright air, but today it felt good to be Gordon. It didn't feel good to be Henry. Henry's tar wagons were very heavy and his engine didn't like the ordinary coal. Gordon steamed across the island. The record is mine, the record is mine. Henry was having a terrible time. He was rocking and rolling, coughing and wheezing. The workmen are waiting, the workmen are waiting, he gasped. Thomas thought Henry looked very ill indeed. Gordon was making good time and feeling grand. Have you seen Henry? asked Thomas worriedly. He looks very poorly. I'm sure Henry is fine, Gordon hooted. But his face was as green as his tender, Thomas puffed. Now Gordon began to wish he hadn't taken Henry's coal. 
but he still wanted to set a new record. So when the signal changed, Gordon puffed on. But no matter how fast Gordon went, he couldn't get away from the bad feeling in his boiler. Gordon wasn't enjoying being Gordon anymore. Gordon had to stop to let off passengers. Henry was taking on water. Henry's face was green. His axles were shaking and dark smoke billowed from his funnel. Are you feeling all right? asked Gordon. I didn't get my special coal this morning, coughed Henry. My firebox feels funny. But then it was time for Gordon to leave. Hooray for Gordon, wheezed Henry. You'll set a new record for sure. Gordon could see Knapford Station up ahead. The fat controller was there. Gordon was on time and going to set a new record. But Gordon's bad feeling was now so strong, he thought his boiler would burst. Gordon slowed to a halt. You're going to be late, cried his driver. I don't care, whistled Gordon, and he started to reverse. Gordon soon reached Henry. Henry had stopped for a rest. He was surprised to see Gordon. I took your special coal this morning, puffed Gordon. I wanted to go faster than ever. I'm very sorry, but now I have a good idea. Gordon and Henry swapped tenders. Soon, Henry's firebox was full of special coal. Henry felt better right away. Thank you, Gordon, he huffed happily, and together they puffed off to Knapford Station. But Gordon and the Express were late. Only Thomas was there. The fat controller had gone home for his tea. I'm sorry you didn't set a new record today, chuffed Henry. And I'm sorry I took your coal, puffed Gordon. Who holds the old record? whistled Thomas. I do, said Gordon, and the good friends laughed.